Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now I'm not sure how widespread Argos is in the US or anywhere else in the world or whether it exists outside the UK but after browsing the website I recently came across one of these. Now this is a hyper laptop that seems to be exclusive to them but although it's exclusive in the included content it's not exclusive in terms of the specification so that's why I thought I'd review it today anyway. So hyper a laptop manufacturer of honestly never heard of, have partnered with Microsoft to produce this Minecraft uh, laptop here. You can see it's all green, looks very nice, and as you can see here, the inspirations are clear. So this retails for £230 here in the UK, which, to be honest, isn't bad considering the specifications of the laptop. Obviously, with this one, you do get the extra Minecraft accessories, such as the sticker pack, the green keys, and of course, this little instruction sheet here that tells you um, the key bindings for the game, which I thought was a nice inclusion. Now, when you fire up this laptop for the first time, you'll notice that it has Windows 10 S, which does limit you to Windows 10 store apps. It's not a big deal considering who this laptop is aimed at, and it doesn't take much to switch out of S mode, nor does it cost anything. It's simply a matter of toggling one button from the settings. So I thought we'd take a look at this laptop today anyway, because as I say, the specs are quite common, but the Minecraft laptop itself is exclusive to Argos here in the UK, although I'm sure if you searched around for one, you might be able to find one on the used market should you want something like this, or should you know anyone that wants one of these. I think it's a pretty cool concept, you know, for those who are into Minecraft, it's not a very demanding game, and something like this would really appeal to fans of the title. I did wonder though whether or not this machine could actually run it and that is the whole idea behind my purchase. The specs of this machine include an Intel Pentium quad core clocked at 1.1 gigahertz, 4 gigs of RAM and 64 gigs of eMMC storage and I couldn't help but wonder whether or not these were enough to run the game smoothly so that's what I wanted to find out today. So let's take a quick in-depth look at the specs. This specific CPU inside the green quirky enclosure is a Pentium N4200 clocked at 1.1 GHz with a burst frequency of 2.5. This can be found in a lot of entry-level machines and will suffice for basic everyday computing. This processor also features onboard Intel HD505 graphics, which were something of a concern to me as I didn't think this was a powerful enough solution for the very game that this product is focused on. Thankfully, the 14-inch display carries a 1366 by 768 resolution, which will give this machine a better chance. This really is a system designed with one game in mind though, and to be honest, I know a lot of parents whose children would absolutely love it. As far as build quality goes, again, it lines up with a lot of budget machines. It's plasticky and lightweight, but feels fairly solid at the same time. All necessary and relevant ports are also included around the edges here, including a headphone jack, micro SD card slot, mini HDMI and USB 3. So, this Minecraft centric laptop, can it actually run Minecraft? Let's say you buy this for a younger family member, or yourself for that matter, because they or you only want to play this game. You want to own as many Minecraft based things as possible and you have a limited budget and of course no space for a traditional desktop PC. Will the frame rate on this laptop be acceptable? Well, if you're happy with fairly low settings then yes, most of the time the game stuck fairly close to 60 FPS, though there were certainly a few drops. Now I personally think if you're buying this then super high frame rates aren't your primary concern. This is what I'd call a good enough experience. It's an experience that newcomers or kids would be satisfied with. The target audience will be appeased, put it that way. I then switched out of S mode, which can be done from the Windows Store, in order to gain an exact idea of performance. I could then install aftermarket programs like MSI Afterburner and check out the CPU and GPU usage, as well as the correct frame rate. Both the CPU and integrated graphics are working fairly well together here, although the GPU is the limiting factor. I apologise if the frame rate looks slow or anything like that to you guys because I had to record at 30fps here, as recording at 60fps caused flickering with the camera. The gameplay feels smoother than what you're seeing here, trust me. I would also recommend using a mouse as well instead of the trackpad. 
I mean, it's fine, don't get me wrong, but for me, gaming using a trackpad is very uncomfortable. Maybe it's just because of my giant hands. I then switched to the fancy graphics mode and toggled smooth lighting too. The frame rate still hovered around 60, but there were more drops, especially in heavily built up areas. Again, though, you shouldn't expect to run with top-notch graphics using this machine. The Minecraft gaming laptop then can handle Minecraft, if you manage your expectations, that is, and don't try to max out all the graphical switches. Because we're out of S mode, I also wanted to try another couple of games to see what the Pentium N4200 could do. This is where we saw the integrated 505 graphics maxing out, so to speak. For example, I uh, played a little bit of Fallout New Vegas here, walked around mainly the Good Springs area, the opening area of the game, and even with the low settings at the laptop's native resolution of 1366 by 768 we were struggling to maintain a solid 30fps. I honestly expected the graphics to do a little bit better than this, but this is an entry-level machine after all, designed with one thing in mind. Having said that though, Fallout New Vegas is generally a very easy going game and runs quite well on a wide range of hardware, so to see this low frame rate here was a bit of a disappointment to say the least. Just because this machine is designed with one game in mind shouldn't mean that it can only run that one game, but I guess you do get the specs that you pay for here as far as laptops are concerned. You know, it wasn't a totally unplayable experience, I'll say that now, I mean, it reminds me of my PlayStation 3 days. This uh, game certainly had a lot of frame dips on that console too. Left 4 Dead 2 was the next game that I played through and more specifically the carnival level. Again we saw around 30 frames per second but there were a lot more dips here with some down to the mid-teens. I'd say 15 frames per second the frame rate went down to. 27, 28 seemed to be the average but again the Intel HD iGPU was maxing out and it'll be interesting to see how well this laptop does if we pair it with a discrete graphics card using an external setup. All in all then the Minecraft official gaming laptop can handle the game it was designed for just not much else which was honestly to be expected. I really did enjoy taking a look at this product though. I mean it's certainly unique and for any Minecraft fan well it could just be a must buy. One quick thing before I end the video, I wanted to mention that during an update we received this error. This was, however, the only time that this occurred, and after restarting the machine, or after the machine automatically restarted, I saw no more errors like this, and I was able to go about my daily business. I just wanted to mention it because it did occur, but it did occur only once. Thanks for watching. Let me know what you think of this uh, video down below. Leave a like on it if you enjoyed it. Leave a dislike if you didn't. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already and hopefully I'll see you all in the next one.